Hi, my name is Alex Zucker. I'm going to be reading from my translation of The Movement by Czech author Petra Hulova. It is a work of speculative fiction set in the near future when women have taken charge of society and both women and men are sent to special institutes for sexual re-education. Um, the novel is narrated by a woman who works as a guard and educator at one of these institutes. And the book is forthcoming from World Editions, both in the U.S. and the U.K., in October. The new clients are always tentative at the start of a workshop, which is understandable, given that it's an unfamiliar environment, plus they have to concentrate. So I tell them it's like the first day of school, the first date with a girl, or the first flight on a supersonic jet complete with the jitters and the psychological leap into the unknown that comes with seeing a woman for the first time, meaning a woman as a being whose value, and therefore attractiveness, doesn't depend on her age and appearance. Of course, this is something that they should have known a long time ago, and most of the men do, so I want them to start by feeling good that they're catching on, although what comes as naturally as breathing to institute graduates can still be quite difficult for new clients in spite of whatever ideological work they've done on themselves before they come outside the Institute's walls, thanks to the movement, the movement, and, once again, the movement. Most of them have to learn these new habits the same way they learned how to ride a bike or swim, and one of the reasons I make this comparison is that, just like with swimming or riding a bike, they never forget their training after their stay at the Institute. The patrol vans bring back any recidivist cases, and the first place they go is the intensive care unit. It isn't only relatives who call for the pickups, but often the men themselves. I feel it coming on again, they report over the phone from home, and we're on our way. The clients sit in a circle, naked, track suits folded in a stack, while I'm in my usual baggy pale blue outfit, gray from so many washings. I start by having them loosen up physically, shaking out their legs and doing the teacup rotation with their arms, and also leave a little time for casual conversation. Then, using precisely formulated questions, I ask the clients to express in their own words what it is that they find attractive in a woman. The majority, who only regurgitate what they've been taught, say intelligence, kindness, a sense of humor, integrity, and dependableness. A minority, either touchingly sincere or total morons, say beauty and youth. And a few proactively just straight out describe the qualities that make a woman a woman. After the introduction comes phase two, also known as rehearsal studio. Assuming they've read the materials they were given on being admitted, a thick folder with the Institute's logo, which they pour over in their dorm rooms for weeks, the clients know this is coming. But given that everyone who passes through the course is bound by an oath of silence, the actual contents of Rehearsal Studio come as a surprise, and I start the whole thing off, as usual, with pictures. Photographs of naked women, alluring in an old world way, projected on the wall. I rotate through them one by one at 30 second intervals, and as a roar of surprise erupts in the room, I urge the men to relax. Only in this frame of mind can things be revealed for what they truly are. And though our clients are subjected to harsh punishments for unauthorized use of pornography, in a controlled form such as this, it can serve as entry-level instructional material. Because while this group of naked men have already been through a thing or two in their first few days at the Institute, this is the moment when their re-education starts for real.